everybody, welcome again to my YouTube channel. Sarah here with you and the very much demanded tutorial on how to make an animation. Um, all I did behind this animation is that uh, I was thinking of making something like a Rose and Guns movie, but uh, it's not going to be something animated. All I'm going to do is just actually putting all my episodes together and then, you know, like one big chunky episode, like a movie. And um, I'm kind of editing it, you know. Uh, here's the very dramatic intro. But anyways, I was just giving you a look on the idea of, of the animation itself. So I will show you all the first steps you need to do to make an animation like this. Okay, so this is like the amount of images. You can see this is the amount of paper. Um, that I drew all of my images on here. So you can see the whole idea is actually that I'm drawing one image after the other. Um, it would appear better if I showed you like this again. One, two, three, you know, or there is an image under here. So you can get the picture. I'm just drawing pictures and I'm just following the same motion like like so which creates an, an an animation and when this is really put up in a very high speed people think it's animated very much a very simple uh, idea of animation let me show you another one here's another one that will be a lot better for you guys here's you feel it's moving right so this is really the whole idea behind this animation. Not done by Flash or any of this kind of flashy stuff. Uh, so, what I've used in the whole idea of making this animation was just normal printing paper. Because they have like a certain degree of transparency. I'm not sure if this is appearing or not, but you can actually see the image back here after that there it's inked. So what I do is I draw one image and then I just put another page like so and I just trace the whole image and try to kind of close the eye or whatever motion that I'm doing. I'm trying to reanimate it to, to animate it by just closing the eye or making it bigger or whatever and trying to keep the frame of the face. Unfortunately it's not neat as the anime because the anime is like have a lot of equipment and stuff. Um, you see, uh, and, and this is the technique they do anime. I kind of went uh, for some time in an animation company, and this is the way that they animated stuff. Anyways, this is the whole idea, but you got to make sure that your drawing is kind of still. And I'm going to show you how just to do that. So this is my panel, okay? This is the one that I draw on all the time. Make sure that whatever panel you're doing, you're just sticking like duct tapes here and here and also the paper that you're working with here and here and you just gotta put those two together like this so that they will be almost very much over each other uh, so when you're tracing and stuff like that uh, the whole idea behind duct tapes is because when you're tracing you want your paper to be still about under um, so the paper that's under which is already inked wouldn't like move a lot and so like that Oh, the whole reason why I did the whole idea of the frame is because when I scan my pictures, um, I want to make them as equal as possible. The whole idea of making the frame, I don't want to like draw the whole image or draw the whole page. It's just going to take a lot. So what I'm doing is I'm actually drawing a part and ignoring the rest. And so if I'm using paint or to cut the extra parts here or here or here, um, I wouldn't like be wondering what parts that I need to cut. I already have lined it from the beginning, so I know what I'm going to cut, and I know what I'm going to take. Might maybe a, like a little difference, like a couple of millimeters difference, but that's all. Um, when you're scanning, there will be like a frame that will appear. I normally would like take the frame around this line and just cut the image the way I want it or the way that I framed that. 
and then I have my image and of course you have to number your drawings because uh, very much is important so I'm um, sorry um you just have to number your images so you know which one is like one of the first one or the second one just putting a number is very helpful okay after scanning the images and cutting them to whatever size you want you're going to have them like in a folder or something here's all your images that's the one that you've used um, so here's an image if I go like I'm going like forward and stuff forward and backward you can see actually the whole idea behind the animation one two three so as you can see as it goes faster it starts to animate uh, and it creates this kind of animation feeling so this is the time when you have to use like the movie maker let me just import some pictures and I'll show you how to do that okay so I just imported a couple of the pictures and this is a length of point or let's say half a second okay so I have like my images one two three four and then three two one because I did already like the girl is closing her eyes okay if I go back like three two one she's like opening her eyes which is really cool effect you don't have to like draw opening and closing eyes it you know just the going descending and ascending will do the trick so how do you see it when the animation is 0.5 it feels like a very slow animation um, but when you like squeeze like I mean I like to work with 0.13 uh, seconds let's make it here for 0.10 for the purposes of demonstration uh, you just gonna squeeze every image like so which is gonna take some time so um, it's really does take some time now let's see after we squeeze every image to 0.1 second how it's gonna look you see that um let me just show you this in another way okay so after copying the images a couple of times this is the effect that you're going to get so um it's not actually animated. The whole idea is that the picture length is around 0.1 second, which is like 1 over 10 of the second, which is extremely fast, uh, which created the whole idea behind this animation. In Vesta, the minimum length is 0.07 and X speeds 0.13 seconds. Both of them create that kind of illusion. My animation was, I did it on 0.13 seconds, so every image is like stayed for 0.13 seconds. Uh, you can squeeze it, you know, but the, like 0.7, I tried it, it's extremely fast, so it just looks weird. It doesn't look like an animation, it looks something else. Um, but this is, anyway, the same way of drawing classic animes. All the animes, all the 2D animations is done like this, unless you're working with Flash, which is something, something else. Um, it's kind of a 2D animation, but it's not exactly the normal or the traditional 2D animation that people are working with. I think a lot of people liked it because it was all drawn on hand from top to bottom and animated by the movie maker, which will make it for people who are actually good at drawing and good at movie maker will be extremely easy for them to do just um, movies like this. But I gotta tell you, this thing takes a long time. I did a lot of repetitions in my uh, in my animation because um, if I would do it like from top to bottom complete you know or if I did it like every scene with a certain look it would definitely would take more time than this so I, I told I maybe this took for me more than 10 hours in complete finish and that's really long for just a 30 second animated which is not even colored. Um, even I gotta tell you, the coloring does take a lot of time. That's why I'm sticking to sticking just to ink ink. Uh, and sometimes the coloring won't like have that nice effect. 
Uh, so if you want to do coloring, I advise coloring. I advise you use like Photoshop or something, but don't really use like warp colors or warp pencils or pencil colors or whatever because just it's gonna destroy the whole drawing. Just keep it plain, plain and simple with inking lines, which will take a lot, lot of time. Because imagine if you're going to have to color. 40 images or so just to make a 30 second animation is going to take a long time. That's why I don't do a lot of animations because it takes a long time, it's very tricky and it's so hard to just copy and, and just follow the whole thing. Um, as I said, I, this would be like an entry for some of my videos and a way of getting published is after we're doing Rose and Guns, it's just putting them in a whole chunky episode making one giant movie or I don't know, one or two parts or whatever, giving it to people, uh, and that will be like a Roses and Guns movie, and that was the idea, of the whole idea of, of this intro, a 30, 30 second, really cool, fast, and of course with the awesome music of Final Fantasy XII, it really does work in a lot of ways. Um, so once after you're done with your storyboard, you can make this. I hope this tutorial was very useful. It's not something that a lot of people would do, you guys. I know people now who are animating are using Flash. It's much easier than do doing this traditionally. So, I hope that this was helpful for you. Sorry about the whole motion sickness, but I don't have, like, um, those weird programs that records what you're doing on the screen. So, I hope this will do. See you later, you guys.